key thing to notice right away he doesn't fight right now you need mats right at least like 100 200 but check he has it he needs minis or shields right check he has it 50 shield good and he needs a pump he doesn't have it so he's not going to fight until he gets that he's gonna fight as fast as possible because he has those three things you're not gonna loot you're not gonna continue looting after that because what that means is that people in your in your poi are gonna get stronger if you keep looting one thing that's really important is you can whenever you have a purple attack you should use it to claim pieces uh it's really strong for doing that just like this right he goes for it 50 50 because you have an hp advantage notice he hit him 64. We hit him 67 right now he this just for peter but specifically this justifies a 50 50. so he makes a, a right hand edit for sure but he walks into the box but he knows he's gonna win even if this guy's a shotgun out you want to end up fight as fast as possible and i think that's what peter but does really well and what what that does is it prevents third parties but also allows you to get more time to key more people right that's why he has so many kills 20 the most common angle for fishy to run is, is the right side so he tries to piece him but then this guy doesn't run you're paying attention to the enemy as well he doesn't run he doesn't go anywhere when you edit you need to make sure you make a proper peek here because of the fact that this guy is looking right at you peter box should go for the 50 50 after the one thing i want you to notice this is the biggest attribute of good w keyers is the fact that you end the fights quickly once you have an hp advantage you can clean the clean the fight up really fast third party opportunity right here that guy's healing, so he goes for the spray to try to interrupt. Peterbot's gonna go after the guy on top because if he goes after the guy on the bottom, this guy's gonna come in in third party. But going after the guy on top, way less likely that this guy's gonna go after you. Gets the edit. Gets a really nice beach control. He actually read this guy really well, I'm not gonna lie. Tries to kill in here, doesn't get it. He needs to get this quick kill quickly. Peterbot's on a timer, he needs to get this kill now. Okay, so one kill went away. This is bad, but now he can just play defensively. Notice how he goes up a lot before he actually heals up. It's really important detail. Because if you just go up one, the, the guy's going to catch up really fast. Notice, this guy's smacking on the right wall. He's right here. So now you need to flip the stair before you edit. So you can actually block him off. You already smacked once. If you start editing now, the guy's going to smack again and edit before you can get out. Notice how he's not going sideways relative to the opponent. Since the opponent was approaching to height on this side, he goes this way, right? Very important. If you go to the side, it's very easy to get peace control. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I think that's really good. Last way to buy time. Good opportunity to go for a shot. It's a 88. Now, okay, key thing, you don't heal anymore. You probably had more chuck splashes, but it's very important you clean this kill up. You just hit him 88 crap. It's very, very important. It's your only chance, right? It's a really nice edit. Use purple attack perfectly. He gets that wall too. Oh, very close. He almost tried to sneak in like a like a really long range attack spray and uh, catch that guy off guard. A lot of people don't hold their backward stairs, right? So sometimes if you just spray it, you'll get a lot of free damage. Good peak wonderful perfect peak actually as soon as you notice that drop down when you're expanding go up because obviously up is the opposite direction of someone below you so then you can get away from him but also get height which is a really good way to get that counter shot and uh start creating advantages for yourself yeah new target and twice not that big of an hp advantage and he's really far away right so he's probably gonna heal up by the time you get there but the the, the damage allows you to approach him in the boat as well Nice. Notice how he made a wide in it? P several reasons. It's bugged, but he has a gold spaz. And the other reason is that he has an HP advantage. One thing I want you guys to know is Peterbot's literally gonna key until he has mobility. But he keys until he has the launch pad and then stops. If you watch his VODs, you'll notice this, this to be like consistently true. He has two pads now, but because it's game one of the tournament, he's gonna continue to key. In any other game, he would just stop. He wouldn't key as much uh, anymore. Because there's obviously better quality players. It's harder to key consistently. Great edit, he gets both pieces. He does what's called the double piece control. Right here. Yeah, he gets the cone first and then places the wall. It's really hard timing, but if you can do it, it's really nice. And then he makes only one tile edit, which allows him to get a right hand peek on the wall and also the cone. Great angle to go for, right hand peek, and also you're a layer up, so this guy can't crank up. great play wow that was amazing the blaze guy does a really good job of uh, peace controlling everything right the only problem is is the last edit peterbot doesn't play fast this guy plays way faster than peterbot and does a lot of mechanics very flashy dies and blaze really doesn't you know understand the concept of peaks and it's really important that you do so that you can focus up on peaks and make sure that you you use them gets this wall makes a right hand peak but notice what's the problem this guy's really exposed it's not a good edit right you have to be careful of that but peterbot gets a really good understanding of the fact that wood builds 
if they're placed and edited right away, they're one pickaxeable, right? So he walks to the right to get cover from this edit and then immediately pickaxes and runs forward because he knows this guy's not going to have his builds out, right? To hold the wall. He's going to have his shotgun out because he's about to go for a peek. You can clearly tell, right? And then gets in. Why does he get in? He knows he has HP advantage. And this guy's probably going to go for a shot as well. So then his shotgun's not going to be ready and Peter Bot's able to get the kill. Out of all these options, right? To kill Dobby Key, he picks one of the ends. Does that make sense? So he could pick this guy too. But the key thing is he picks someone that is not in the middle. Because if you go up to this guy, you're going to get sprayed from everyone. Owns, cuts off this guy. This guy has no builds, right? Cut, cuts off his third party angle. Make sure you place this wall as well. Breaks the stair to allow himself to place a cone. And then he's going to go up to this final piece. Notice, notice how he has the left wall. This guy has no escape. This guy's looking straight at him. You can see it literally. This guy's head's glitching through the, the stair. You see that? So Peterbot pulls out his shotgun. Because he knows this guy's looking at him. And then resets, right? Misses the shot, but doesn't matter. That's the whole point. Like, that's how strong macro is in that case, right? When I say macro, I mean game sense, essentially, right? If you want to put it simply. Um, and his, the macro is so correct that he messed up and missed his proc and shot, and he still won. Gets that cone. Wow, that was so close. Notice, I think you noticed right away. You can actually sneak cones further than walls and, and floors, and I'm sure a lot of people know this already. So the cones have a bigger like piece range or like a build range than all the other builds. But notice how he places all the cones here. He, co he cones around the corner, right? To, to make sure this guy can't go up, right? Or down. And then forces him into a box next to him. So now we're going to learn a little bit about like how he's going to key an endgame, which is obviously different. Endgame, it becomes even more important to end the fights quickly, but a lot of his kills probably will be through AR. Yep, he hit this guy white twice, so he knows he got that kill. So he just plays it safe. And just ARs him. Short pad to get the mats, because he needs them, right? He has 900, which is honestly a lot, but... Like, he, at this point, he can short pad several times. But he's, he, this guy, he should get in. This guy's met getting in, Zorchi crap. Yep. Gets that kill, he should take height, take height, take height, yeah. Oh, there's a guy on height, actually. It's a 1v1v1. So one thing key to really notice is that he still wins this game despite the mat count being a problem. Covers his head a lot. Does like a two by two cover on his head. And he's not gonna go for height right away because he only has 200 mats. Oh wow, this guy 50 50s. Out of mats. Nice.